did some nice things. There are certainly plays that you want to have back. Um, still a handful of penalties, more in the first half that we need to eliminate. I believe, uh, I think I saw two, two false starts. There was a face mask on what would have been a really good tackle uh, if he didn't reach at the last second. It was right in front of me. It was either DJ or uh, Graybun. They were both in on the tackle. So want to eliminate that. There was a late hit by one of our newcoming walk-ons there at the end of the game. We'll, we'll coach him hard on that when we get to the film. But overall, some really good things. I like where the tempo of our offense is right now. I think those of you that were here now compared to a year ago could feel that. We had 52 plays in the first half from our offense with the ones. Um, so that's closer to where we want to be while still controlling the clock and allows us to be more aggressive on really third and thinking ahead to fourth down. So a lot of things that we're excited about, but we have a long, long way to go. Uh, it was good to see some of our signees here at the game. Uh, some even of our some of our out of state guys were here, so it's good to get them in the locker room and get them around their future teammates uh, as we continue to build this roster here at Florida Atlantic. So, with no other opening statements, I'll uh, open it up for questions. What was the overall sense of just the first team offense with the production, given that that's the unit that has the most guys back from a year ago? Well, if you look at uh, you know just quick glance in the first half, we had what three touchdowns, a field goal. And two punts, that, that's pretty good first half. And as you come out of the locker room in the second half, you're really starting to mix in. Uh, you're getting away from the true one unit a little bit. So when you look at the first 52 plays and how they were executing some of the tempos, uh, I'm excited about it. And there was a couple kids that, um, you know, we had up with the twos that are actually ones at this point because I want them to finish strong academically this semester. So that played into some of the, what color jersey some of the kids are playing. But three touchdowns, a field goal, two punts, uh, you'll take that in a half any time with as close to our true ones as we are right now. Is there anything uh, concerning Jake Warren or was there, what was the reason to pull he, him out? You know, he could have played. If this were a true game day, he would have gone. His hamstring was tight and sore. And right now at this point, uh, we felt it would be more advantageous to, to hold him out and get him to position where he has a great start. Anybody else left out for injury reasons, precautions that we haven't really been? Yeah, we well, have. Yeah, the, the guys that had post uh, season operations, those guys have been out for the majority of spring. A couple of them actually are, are pretty close to where they could have been active today, but those post season op guys, we kept them out the majority of spring. Robert Ralph has been dealing with some groin things, which you guys knew about, and same with uh, Raekwon, Raekwon Williams. So those guys, we've been holding out for a couple of days, but nothing new beyond that. Kind of um, the role do you see for, for Gaskins this year? He did some good things today. He did do. So, you know, he had a couple, uh, you know, made misses out there in the open field that I'll be completely transparent with you. I had not seen him do since I walked in the door. So it's it's funny. You go into a stadium and kind of turn the lights on into somewhat of a game like atmosphere, and some kids wither and some kids uh, their their light shines, and, and he did shine today. I feel like we've got good competition there with Jay and Buddy and. Uh, Gaskins as well, and Trey Rodriguez probably opened some eyes uh, for those that, that haven't seen us practice much today as well. He's a very talented young man. Just got to continue to see how he handles what all of college, being a college athlete, is. You mentioned Trey's day. Uh, we've seen a little of, of him during during spring practice, but but for a lot of the fans, this was their first really uh, recognition of, of what he can bring. What does he have that that some of the other backs that you currently have in this? That this backfield have this sure. that they don't. Well, you know, I, I think if you were to classify, which I think all of them have multiple talents, but if you took Buddy, Buddy's a downhill power, run through arm tackle, get an extra couple of yards through contact type of guy. Jay Warren is make a decision, he's going to get right downhill, similar to Buddy, but but different. He's probably a little bit quicker in the hole. You look at Trey, and, and he. I'm not going to say lucky, but he's got some of those qualities: the speed, the make and miss ability, and uh, the thought of getting him out in the open field, you know, in various ways, is exciting to us as he continues to grow. Um, looking at the graduation of Alex Daly, who do you expect to step up at tight end for you? Well, that's a, that's a great question because tight end really is an integral part of our offense. Uh, Chandler Dexter is continuing to come on. He's only been here for one semester and 15 practices, but. Uh, in our last scrimmage, he really had a couple nice catches. He did some good things today, had a nice catch on the sideline, but he's still learning. Everything's happening at a very fast pace for him. So I'm excited about him. Dustin Bowens is another one that we kept out as a precaution today. 
Um, so he had had a good spring up until about practice 13, 14. Uh, we decided to keep him out from a precautionary standpoint. So you have those two. You have Nate Terry, who's a who's a hybrid tight end wide receiver who can really do both same things. So and Jacob Wilson has had a. a, a a surprising spring and that he's further along than we expected him to be at this point. So uh, that, that arsenal right now we feel good about as long as they don't stay where they are, they've got to progress. Charlie, you mentioned this not, not being a practice like it was last year, a little more of a practice last year than this year. Mm -hmm. Did, how far more along does that show where you are from coming in here to, to where you are now? Hard to translate. I'm not going to you know predict where we're at from a season standpoint, but if you're comparing apples to apples, uh, it's, we're in a different stratosphere. I mean, we're having conversations on the headsets that a year ago we were we were working on the semantics. Now we're making all right. It's it's you know it's third and six on two. You're going to go for it, or work, you know those types of things that our kids are now more in tune to. You know, getting four yards on on first down, getting half of it on second down, situational stuff that again a year ago we couldn't talk. And the kids were talking it today without us prodding it for them. So I'm excited about that piece of it. Linebacker has been probably the most question mark mm -hmm. position of yeah. the spring. How would you assess Nate? You know, when you said earlier this was a yeah. pretty big opportunity for him. Yeah. How would you say he and, and the rest of the linebackers look for you? Well, hard today to answer that question without seeing the film, but there were some good examples. I know we had a nice physical tackle there on a key third or fourth down. I can't remember whether it was third or fourth, but it was for a stop. Um, you know, he, a couple days ago he had some really nice, uh, you know, what we call Tampa two, some some middle run through drops where he made key pass breakup. So there's there's times where Nate is flashing. He's still got to continue to get better, um, but I'll, I'll assess exactly how he did today once we get the film. Dr. Quarterback, um, I mean, or let me change this How about Daniel Park? I mean, the kid that's only been on campus a few months, he comes out, throws a couple of impressive touchdowns today. Yeah. Is it a surprise to you at this point? Or? No, no, honestly not. I mean, he's, he's, you know, age-wise, he's still a high school senior. You know, he's probably out of prom in a couple weeks. Um, he, he, uh, he's very talented. He's very gifted. He's a competitor. He's shown all those qualities. So from that standpoint, I'm not surprised. I'd have been surprised if it wasn't that way. A couple weeks ago when we opened up the scrimmage to the public, uh, he had a really nice day, kind of a uh, eye-opening day. Where's this kid going to go? And then we put in two minutes the following Tuesday and he looked like a freshman again. So you have all those uh, ups and downs, peaks and valleys that you're going to have with a young player. And, and as he continues to develop through the summer and fall practice, uh, it would be interesting to see how far he can take it. How important is his relationship with Quez and what has that relationship been so far? Uh, Quez, is, uh, Quez is fun to be around. I mean, I hear Quez joking with Daniel Parr in an appropriate way all the time. I mean, joking about uh, ball security things and halfway making fun of him for it when he doesn't do it right. Their relationship has been positive the whole time. Uh, I, I think if, if it sets itself up where Daniel can be in position to learn from Quez and his experience, I think it would be great for the, the Florida Atlantic Owls. Professor Thomas, um, someone who can use this lot of move in after learning from a lot of veteran guys. Yes, sir. He seems to be pretty impressive in the second year. Yeah, he, he, uh, he's really overall had a very nice spring. Um, for, for me, a, a bright spot. I, I, don't, I think that he's another one that is further along than I would have expected at this point. Um, he played a lot of safety the year before we got here. Um, as we adjusted and, and uh, moved through things, we felt like Damien and, uh, you know, obviously, um, Christian. thank you. Christian. <laughs> uh, Damien and Christian were, were two guys that were set for safety. And, um, we're, we're excited about what Lester can do for us here moving forward, and I think this is having a nice spring as well. What about offense, Coach? Other than uh, Justin Stoshop, who are you expecting to step up at wide receiver this year? Well, uh, Caleb Woods, as he continues to mature as a person, as someone that has big playability, it's just a consistency thing with him. Uh, Derek Moise is going into his senior year, so if he can perform and prepare like a senior, uh, then, then we're hoping that he has an exciting year. Nate Terry, while he's a tight end, there's we often flex him out. He's someone that uh, can make some big plays, and you know we've got some, some certainly some young guys coming as well. Cam Solomon is someone that's had a nice spring. I'm not ready to say he's going to do it yet, but it's someone to keep an eye on. Is there a clear backup quarterback there, at this at this stage? There, there isn't. Um, there truly isn't. Right now, we, again, we're playing tomorrow. Quiz is our starter. Uh, you have a battle for that second second quarterback spot, and it's with all three of them. Uh, with Daniel, Jason Driscoll, uh, and Greg. All three of them at times have looked really good, and there's times where you feel like they're not ready to be in that role. So 
but let the let the competition competition roll. Roll. Yeah. sort of roll. Yes, yeah, absolutely. How much how much has that passing game switched with the wide receivers that, that left after this past year and, and now having you know a different style of, of receiver? We saw you go to a lot of screen passes mm -hmm. today. Is that just being conservative in a spring game, or is that maybe a little more replicative of what we can expect? No, I, I think there was certainly some. There was quite a few plays that we did not allow our offense to call today, um, but. The, the, the biggest production that we're going to miss from a year ago is Lucky. And a lot of Lucky's production was ironically on the screen. So it's always been a big part of our offense. It's really it's a part of the run. Um, I won't get too philosophical on you, but it's just a triple option. It's, uh, the bubble is just pitch, guys. It's not, we're not reinventing the wheel. Um, uh, but, but that's where a lot of our production within the run game comes. Um, as Jensen and Caleb and those guys continue to grow, we'll continue to develop our deep threats. Coach, I know it's been tough. 10 or 11 days for Mike, uh, given what happened with his family and his father. Uh, how much did it mean for you to just have him be here today, to be back with the team? And uh, what was it like to watch Joey sort of play in his place? Uh, it meant a lot to see Mike. Um, our, our, our heart aches for him. I, I can't pretend to put myself in his shoes. I mean, most of us, as you get older in life, you experience loss. and. When something like that happens, you you tend to go back to those experiences. Um, but I, I told Mike I don't need to. He, he heals in his own uh, time frame. If he's ready to be with the team, I thought I said I think it'd be good for you, but you don't have to be. Um, he's he's healing. His 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 soul has been injured, and we're giving him the time that he needs. It's more important than football. Uh, uh, was was Joby just sort of a, the next guy up? I mean, is he sort of in ways? Who's that? that? Joby. Um, I think it was a. Uh, I think it was Joey who played for him, uh, Smith. At the oh, Jacoby. Jacoby, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. Um, sorry. No, it's okay. It's, okay. Um, it's okay. I mean, right now you, you'd say we, our guards are, are four. We got four guys at guards. Dylan, who didn't practice this spring because of postseason operation. Mike Marseille, uh, Antonio Woods, and Jacoby. Who is, Jacoby has had a nice spring. Jacoby's lost about 25 pounds, and he looks really good for it. Um, our guys. The, the nutrition, we're a year, you guys have heard me talk about nutrition until I'm blue in the face, but we're now a year into it, and we're starting to see the fruits of, of all that paying off. It's like a most improved position to group, that you'd have to go to the offensive line. Compared to a year ago, it's it's not even close. Now, again, we're not ready. We're not getting ready by any stretch, but just comparing from now to a year ago, that's our most improved group, and credit has to go to our, obviously, Coach Miller, our strength coaches, the players for buying in. Uh, Kelly Parker has come in and done a really, really nice job from the minute he stepped on campus and done now. So I'm excited about what that unit can become. What did you think of the team's conditioning today? It's blazing hot outside today, and so I'm pretty sure the players were. Didn't I didn't notice like a ton of people cramping up or anything like that? Uh, still not there yet. There was uh, there was a couple timeouts that I called for that reason, um, where I saw saw kids right on the edge of where they were they could be in position to cramp and it. It's just not worth it because cramps can lead to other things. So, uh, and, we, and we didn't shoot. And, and as you prepare for spring, you're you're in an eight-week cycle where you're trying to gain strength and size. You know, as you have an eight-week cycle leading up to the season, it's to get yourself game ready. So those are things to factor in. So to answer your question, good for being uh, uh, what is it, April 11th or whatever it is. To not well, if it were August, I'd be nervous. Well, what's what's next after today? And I know you will review the film. Yeah. You will look through sort of the injury condition as well as yes. next sort of later and next week and further on? Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, we'll, we'll take tomorrow, grade the film as, uh, as individual coaches. We have an 8 o'clock team meeting on uh, Monday to really give our kids the direction because they're right around the corner from finals. So they'll get a couple weeks to let their bumps and bruises heal. Uh, and, and, and we've been training them hard. We've been training them hard since January 5th because uh, we needed to make a lot of gains, and we still do. But I feel like we accomplished a lot of the things we needed to. So team meeting on Monday, a lot of exit interviews. Every kid on this team will get an interview with their position coach to let them know where they stand in terms of the roster and, and depth chart and those types of things. Uh, and then they'll finish their finals, finish strong there, hopefully, and then come back May 11th, the veterans will, and they'll still, by rule, be lifting on their own for a couple weeks. And then we crank it up there at the beginning of June for a full eight-week cycle leading into the season. And we recruit. And Summer camps will be here before you know the cycle, right? Yeah. right? We'll be out spring recruiting, and summer camps come our way, and giddy up. There we go. It'll be August before you know. Are there, are there, just a question: Are the camps a little more geared towards you now? Uh, is where the, the year where the calendar sort of fits? We uh, eighth, 
8th and 9th are individual days. 10, 11, 12 is team camp. June 17th, we have an individual camp. Feel free to print all of this. <laughs> June 8 and 9 are each individual camps. 10, 11, 12 is team camp. June 17th is another individual camp we added because Ohio State's entire staff is going to come down and work with us on that camp day. Is there any reward for the blue team winning the game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more work. We a long way. No, it's, it's no. It's, really, today, it was good to split the team up and, and compete. That's all I wanted to see was competition. Great question, no. <laughs> I, I know we got everybody here, but you have a message for Kenny today? Kenny, uh, couldn't be happier for you, buddy. I can't believe you found someone that's willing to spend the rest of their life with you. <laughs> but we're excited for you, man. Wish I could be there and go out. Have a great day. Enjoy your wedding. Thanks, so. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.